However, supply chain continues to be positioned uh, oftentimes two and sometimes three levels down in the yeah. organization yes. from the CEO. Now you say, well, that's okay. I report to the CFO. He's directly linked in. We have a very good relationship. That's all good. Yeah. However, that's not the same. You're not truly in the conversation. You're yeah. not part of the, the dialogue. Yes. You're not part of the decision process. Yes. And, and that, that leaves a gap. I Welcome to an episode of Strategic Conversations. We host insightful discussions with top business leaders and top thinkers. Today, we are hosting Mr. Dennis Wolowicki, the Executive Managing Director of CAPS Research. Mr. Wolowicki will be a speaker at the Houston Strategy Forum's upcoming 11th Annual Supply Chain Symposium, and we are excited to host him. He's coming back to speak to us. He spoke to us last uh, year. It was a fantastic session, and we can't wait to host him again. I am Ravi Kathuria, the president of the Houston Strategy Forum and author of the management leadership book, How Cohesive is Your Company, and author of Happy Soul, Hungry Mind. Strategic conversations are hosted by the Houston Strategy Forum. If you value these conversations, please hit like and subscribe to the Houston Strategy Forum's YouTube channel. Today's episode is sponsored by Cohegic Management Consulting and Executive Coaching Firm. Thank you for joining us, and we are looking forward to a great discussion with Mr. Wolowicki. Dennis, thank you for taking the time to be part of this strategic conversation today. And thank you, sir, for being part of the Supply Chain Symposium on February 7th. We are looking forward to hosting you again. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate the invitation. I enjoyed it last year, and I'm looking forward to the next one. You bring in a good group of panelists and speakers, and there's a great, great uh, crowd of people that are that are there in the audience, and I found it to be a, a very interesting session. Very nice. Yes, sir. We're, uh, we're very thankful, very blessed that uh, speakers and top thinkers and executives take the time to come participate in the forum. And not just come participate, be but be willing and open to participate in the forum's unique discussion style format, right? Not uh, uh, that that is uh, that is not an easy task to open yourself and and be be willing to go with the uh, uh, the dynamic flow of the conversation. Uh, but that's what uh, we enjoy and and we appreciate you being part of it. Thank you, sir. So Dennis, as you as you start the year 2024, and I and I appreciate you and, and congratulate you for all the work that you and, and CAPS Research are doing in helping supply chain leaders become more uh, effective and focused on what they're doing and, and, and really understanding the business drivers. Uh, as you look at 2024, what are the challenges that supply chain leaders are facing? What is it? that they are trying to solve new challenges and old challenges? Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's a combination of things as, as typical. And, you know, some of this is a repeat uh, from 2023, I must say. But we continue to look forward. I'll start there. So part of the remit from CAPS Research is to provide that long view of what's coming. What do the leaders need to be worrying about? Looking down the road, say, three to five years, what are the trends? What are the developments? What are the the the, the geopolitical changes? You name it. Um, and we continue to see those things unfold. I'll tell you one topic on the top of minds is generational AI. And how does this impact on the supply chain? What's the right way to bring this tool and this technology into our daily processes? That's not at all clear yet, but there are a lot of companies playing with that. And we're doing some research and some surveys around that to better understand uh, ways that might be done. Um, so that's one of the very long lead views. One of the things that continues to be a longer view, but but also manifests in daily operational reality is, is nearshoring. The whole concept of exshoring, nearshoring, reshoring, friendshoring, whatever you want to name that. Uh, that's causing an underlying current of changes and ongoing activity as companies continue to wrestle with supply continuity, geopolitical risk, inflation, and all of those factors. 
Um, and we're seeing some of that play out. Like, for instance, we just recently saw a freight report where um, China's number one export market now is surrounding Asian countries. It's no longer the number one market to the U.S. Uh, that, that balance has flipped a little bit. So you're seeing some of that repositioning in the supply chain. Um, but then we're also continuing to monitor the daily reality of, of operating the supply chain and operating the businesses, yes. of doing the benchmarking and doing the survey of what, what are companies facing? What are the current realities? And I'll tell you, some of those current realities are the same as last year. Companies are continuing to grapple with risk and trying to understand how to measure and manage risk in their supply chain. It's, it's a very big unknown for most companies. Inflation uh, and, and the control of costs continues to manifest. Um, you know, it was a major concern uh, as, as recovery started to peak post-pandemic, uh, but it's not cooled off in a lot of areas and companies are continuing to face that challenge. Um, and then the, the pressures of uh, net zero carbon environmental, it remains a persistent factor. And frankly, companies don't yet understand how to get their arms around that. The reality is that's not easy to do. And so these are some of the things that continue to be top of mind. I, I, I appreciate you pointing those out because as I have talked to some of the speakers who are coming February 7th, they seem to highlight the same issue. So you, you certainly have the pulse uh, on the market. Um, is there a is there a, a company or, or group of companies or even in an in industry sector who you think is applying? Uh, you, you said a couple of times that, you know, the, we, we, we see the, the set of problems that we are facing, the challenges. Uh, some of them were there in 2023, right? So we're, what that tells me is that we're, we're we are still solving challenges in 2023. You talked about inflation. Inflation has been there now. Mm -hmm. uh, right cost and price escalations. We still have time delays. And of course, the geopolitical situations, uh, one of the speakers pointed out, he said, nobody could imagine that the Panama Canal uh, and the Suez Canal will be both blocked up at the same time, right? In, yeah. in your scenario yeah. planning, you go, okay, that seems to be less than 1%. And here That's we the are. outlier, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And so we are, uh, you know, we, we, we see those, those challenges. The the question I have is, do you see, is there a company that seems to uh, being is seems to be employing some creative solutions, right, to these problems, whether it is whether it's price cost escalations, whether it is time delays, these geopolitical challenges, this this aspect of nearshoring, right? Uh, how are they doing nearshoring? Who is who is employing uh, some creative um, ideas out there? Well, I, I wish I had some clear examples. I couldn't name names if I if I did uh, okay. know those, but I wish I had more clear examples around that. And unfortunately, I don't. Um, you know, what I hear and what I see is companies are really all more common than not in wrestling with these challenges. Now, there are some certain things being done, for instance, um, around AI as an example, there are some interesting experiments being run around how to use that in various ways within the business, but it's still it's still very localized. It's still yes. very small. Yes. Um, as far as uh, dealing with some of the supply chain continuity issues, um, I, I don't see a silver bullet or I don't see really a shining example quite yet. I think this comes back to, and you and I have talked about this a little bit, this comes back really to the fundamentals. Uh, more and more, we seem to keep relearning the lesson of the fundamentals of supply chain is very good uh, visibility to your spend, very good supplier management programs, very strong category management and sourcing activity, um, just being ever vigilant around planning and forecasting and inventory management. Uh, all of those basic, basic concepts just uh, continue to be ever so important. And you know, you mentioned the uh, you mentioned the the shipping issue. That's that's clearly yeah. one of the current factors is the disruption to global ocean shipping, and a lot of reports in the la just in the last week even about the effect that's having on rates. Yes. One of the other things, maybe not so recognized right now, is that's going to have an effect on lead times. It already has with changes in port schedules, changes in shipping routes. This changes lead time, and we just 
have seen companies start to regain some control around excess yes. inventory that was built up. And now here come lead time disruptions again. Well, we know from our studies the last time, the first thing companies did in the face of lead time uncertainty, they buffered up their inventories. Yeah. And I suspect that will happen again. Yes, and 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 then which which yes, which exacerbates the problem because we're still chasing, you know, is is the whack-a-mole. Is what we're still that's a good example. That's a good expression, whack-a-mole. That's exactly yeah, it's, how I, I see it. We're 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 not able to get the the cycle to to work so that we were constantly these these bottlenecks travel. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and 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 uh, one of the issues you I, I want to uh, key in our, our audience to a little bit of the discussion that we had before we started uh, recording about uh, the, for lack of better way of describing it, is the gap between supply chain and executive management, right? The getting the CEOs and management teams to truly mm -hmm. understand the critical issues in supply chain, right? So that supply chain is not just a black box that uh, they don't have to deal with and they only address it if there's something goes wrong, right? And so it's, it's something that is, you know, out of mind and, and, and as long as it's working, they're, they're happy. But those days, you know, with, with the, the market volatility, the demand swings that we have seen uh, mm -hmm. during the pandemic and uh, even now as, as the, the economy begins to slow down and normalize a little bit from the swings that it faced, um, CEOs, have to begin to improve their knowledge and education about the critical issues which are within supply chain, right? Right. And right. They, they need to appreciate that because not just that they need to understand it because then they can provide critical and timely support as opposed to letting supply chain deal with it because uh, supply chain sits at the crossroads. Uh, I had a discussion with one of the speakers and I'm going to emphasize this point on February 7th is that the the mindset in companies has to change from you know for example engineering has this mindset of their goal is project design right the mm. goal cannot be project design the goal has to be project success right yes. and project success involves all the functions yes right so the management team yes. the ceo has to begin to understand how do i bring all the functions to work together that drives project success. And mm -hmm. for that project success to happen, they need to understand and appreciate everything, the critical uh, aspects of supply chain so that then they can help provide, ha provide help and send a message to the other functions that this is where the handshake is. This is how you need to work. And I find even after this is our 11th year of doing supply chain symposium, and we're always you know, the reason why the Houston Strategy Forum does Supply Chain Symposium is because we want to look at it from a strategic point of view. And after 11 years, I I am sorry to report <laughs> that we still have so much room to cover. So I would I would love your uh, take on that. Am I am I seeing this right or am I am I missing the boat? What, what is it? What really is happening in companies between CEOs and management teams and their supply chain understanding? Oh boy, there's there's so many directions I could go with that answer, but let me let me cover a few highlights. I think uh, one thing is we continue to see just a separation, actually a a, a gap in the organizational structure yes. with where supply chain is often positioned. And our surveys uh, consistently bear this out over a period of some years. That you know, we talk about uh, supply chain having a seat at the table, right? That's the expression. Yes. We want a seat at the table. We want, we want to a seat at the strategic table. That's right. We want to be in the in the executive room. We want yes. to be in the boardroom in yes. the boardroom discussion. However, supply chain continues to be positioned uh, oftentimes two and sometimes three levels down in the yes. organization yes. from the CEO. Now you say, well, that's okay. I report to the CFO. He's directly linked in. We have a very good relationship. That's all good. Yes. However. That's not the same. You're not truly in the conversation. You're yes. not part of the, the dialogue. Yes. You're not part of the decision process. Yes. And, and that, that leaves a gap, I think. And that we see that. And we see the effect of that. You know, you use the expression about uh, people collaborating, working together. I'm reminded of my earlier career. I was an engineer. 
And, uh, you know, the complaint was sales goes and sells something. They have no appreciation for how it needs to be designed, <laughs> right? Everybody throwing rocks at each other. Yes. But, you know, there's a lot of truth to that, actually, about just really appreciating uh, cross-functionally what's involved for the other functions. And I think I think when supply chain's not embedded in that executive level conversation, there's a gap that that maybe doesn't properly shape customer strategy, product strategy, uh, overall business strategy. And so then supply chain's left to react. And people they're great professionals. They're gonna do what they need to do, but it forces them into a bit of a reactive mode instead of being able to pre-plan and strategize around some of these things. Yeah, I, I loved what you said because uh, that point about supply chain reporting into the CFO, you know, CFOs and the and the and the financial function has a very critical role, you know, to see things in black and white and drive that. Supply chain, if it is put or housed under that, can be constrained in its thinking, right? It it, it what it does is it, it makes it a back office element and it 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 then strips it off, strips off the strategic aspects of supply chain. One of the leaders that we will host on February 7th, his company, Fortune 500 company, has a very interesting organization structure. Supply chain reports into the Office of Operational Excellence. And, and Dennis, I have to tell you, I was so excited uh, to hear that. And, and I, I'm, I hope to explore that uh that aspect on you know that's probably an opportunity for a really interesting study is pick a handful of companies that have a better org structure and a better alignment with supply chain and then do a deeper dive into what what is different in those companies how do they operate and and what are the benefits that that would be interesting i i would love that i would love that i would the houston strategy forum would support that uh that study and and would keenly look to the results to see, right? Because, right. Uh, but I, I find, and I, I will say this with authority, uh, I have for 25 years coached CEOs and companies on how they should do organization design. And I'll tell you, CEOs don't always come up with the best organization design. They don't apply um, the, the techniques or the best practices on how truly to design organization structure. It always comes from gut feeling and it does not always serve the organization, right? So mm -hmm. that the design of organization structure is so important in a company. It drives the execution uh, and sends the right messages. That study, uh, I think, would be a, a wonderful, be very... In I think so too. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it CEO should should probably that they should sign up now to see what the results and then say, all right, how do we how do we take our organization? So we'll talk about this organization structure uh, issue on February seventh. Dennis, I I cannot uh, wait uh, to to have this conversation on February seventh. I would love to make this an hour long uh, discussion, but these these are meant to be shorter discussions. So I, I want to make sure that my audience. Uh, our audience will we'll save it for the live event. How's that's that? right. Come, come join us. Come visit with, with, with Mr. Wolowicki, understand how he thinks, understand his research, understand the guidance that he's offering company through CAPS research. And, and I'll tell you, I, I would love to tell your audience. I will, when we're there, I'll tell them about um, how this rolls down into the supply chain organization itself with organization structure. And we have measured the difference in performance with different organizations in the, at the supply chain level. So this this discussion goes all the way down into the team. Yes, yes, no, uh, very important. So come come engage with him, come engage with our other leaders. Uh, let's let's have a real discussion. We're at the Houston Strategy Forum. We're not interested in, in, in a superficial discussion. We're a closed room discussion, no press, Chatham House rules. So we get into uh, the, the real world crux of the matter. So join us. February 7th. Uh, Dennis, I am looking forward to hosting you, sir. Thank you so much for Thank being you, part Robbie. of this. Thank you, Robbie. All right. Very good. Be well. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you.